What's up, YouTube? So, uh, I've had a few requests from people uh, asking me to make this video on how I was able to hack into the Phantom 4 Pro Plus remote control. I was able to install the Google App Store, uh, or Google Play, excuse me. And um, so yeah, here we go. I'll uh, try to make this fairly sweet, straight to the point. So the first thing we need to do is, uh, I'm working on a MacBook here. So uh, we need to hook up the Phantom Fro uh, remote control via USB. Turn it on. And uh, give it a second to boot up. And then once it's uh, booted, using ADB, verify that we have some sort of connectivity to it. Sorry about that, I had to cut away for a second. I had a, uh, a bogus USB cable. Anyhow, um, once your Phantom 4 controller has booted up, make sure it's uh, viewable from your computer. Uh, like I said, I'm using a MacBook. And then we're gonna start. So the first thing we need to do is to run um, hack against the install D that is on the controller and there is a github called original gangster cow and I'll put the link in the description below that you need to download and what we need to do is once you download it make sure that the last guy cry dot sh is executable and then execute it. It will upload a couple files to the controller and then it will execute the dirty cow hack against install D. Take a minute. Waiting. There we go, three hours later. So, once this is completed, you need a second computer running Windows. So, um, here I am on an old Dell laptop. Um, if you have an old laptop, I would advise using it as opposed to installing Kingo Root on a laptop that you actually care about because I've heard some rumors that um, it comes sometimes with viruses. Anyhow, moving on with that. Um, so go ahead and connect the controller to your Windows computer running Kingo Root and um, go ahead and start it up and hit Root. And it will take um, a few minutes to um, go ahead and try all the potential hacks and um, once it hits a hundred percent it should say success and then once it does what we're gonna do is disconnect the controller don't shut it off that's important and reconnect it back well, for me, I'm using a Mac. I mean, if you choose to do all of this on a Windows computer, you can do that. Um, but um, I prefer to use uh, MacBook. Anyhow, um, just give this a few minutes. It'll be done. And then we'll move on to the next step, which will be changing out the route from Kingo to SuperSU which is a requirement for us to be able to use FlashFire to install uh, Google Play. All right, stand by.
Okay, now we're back. Back from Windows onto the Mac. So after running Kingo Root on the controller, you need to install Super SU, this version right here. Now, hopefully you didn't shut off the remote control um, any time in between. Because if you do, this install is going to fail. You'll have to go back into original Gangster Gal and rerun the last um, Sky Cry or last Cry Sky uh, shell script, and then go back and do ADB install super SU. Now, what we need to do is go over to The controller and into the applications directory you will see super su so you want to go in there and tap super su tap new user and then and then it will say if you have a custom recovery like twerp or cwm that can be used which we don't, we're just gonna hit normal. And then it's gonna go and install a uh, busy box. Now it's important to make sure that your your um, RC has a Wi-Fi connection because it needs to go download from the internet. In fact, during this whole process, I, I try to keep the um, Wi-Fi connected. Now, after you open SuperSU, it'll say that um, it needs to be updated. Then it'll ask you what type of bootloader you have, hit normal. Then it will go out to the net, grab some files it needs, and it'll take a couple minutes. And then once it's completed, then you go ahead and hit reboot, and then it'll come back up. And then what you want to do is go in and install another piece of software. You need EU Chainfire Flash. And you will also need app to SD all in one tool or something very similar. And I'll explain why in a moment. So let's go ahead and install those two. So we're going to go ahead and do ADB install EU chainfire flash blah dee dee blah dee dee blah dee blah. There we go. That's done. And then we'll do ADB install whoops app 2SD. Okay, there we go. Successful install. So now both of these will be in your applications list on the controller. The next step that we need to do, and I'll show you why, if you go into ADB shell and you do a DF, you'll see that slash this system here does not have a lot of space for you. Uh, uh, 102.4 megabytes. And unfortunately, the Google Play Store and supporting apps require a bit more than that. Not a lot more, but a bit more. So what you have to do is go into the controller, into your applications, and open up app to SD. And then it'll ask you if, if it should have super user rights, and you should say grant. And give it a minute, and then once it's um, loaded up, you're going to go in, and you're going to remove. Um, well, I 
I remove WeChat since I never touch it. It's installed in system and it will free up a bunch of space. Uh, enough space so that we can then install the Google Apps. So once you're in app to sd you're going to click on the second link which will take you to moving an app to an SD, but you're not actually going to be moving an app. What you're going to do is what I do, scroll all the way down to the very bottom, and you'll see WeChat, highlight it and hold it, and a pop-up box will come up. It'll say backup, select, link on leak, manage, launch, or uninstall. So what I do is I uninstall WeChat, and give it a second, and it'll say action performed successfully. Hit OK. And then if we go back to our shell connection and we do a DF, we will see we have made up from free space. And I think roughly we need about 125 megabytes of free space. So there's a few other things in here, not necessarily to um, running the controller that you could probably remove. Um, stress test this is one of the ones that I've removed in the past. Twitter. Um, it all depends on what you can live without. You can always put it back after the fact. But we need to free up enough space to be able to get the Google App Store in there. Um, here's the other one I delete. Google PDF Viewer. I have absolutely no use for that, and I believe that is the one that um, will give us just enough space to be able to uh, whoops, be able to do this for us to be able to uh, install the Play Store. So now, what you're going to do is uh, you need an SD card that you're going to plug into your remote control on the back. And you're going to take the Open Gaps ARM. Oh, well, here it is here. Open Gaps ARM 5.1 Pico file. It's 106.1 megabytes. You're going to copy it to the root of that um, SD card. Then place the SD card into the controller. And it's also important to make sure that you haven't power cycled or rebooted the controller before you do this. Because if you have, you need to go back into the original Gangster Cow and run the, um, the script here. And the reason why that is, is because every time you reboot the controller, DGI replaces the install D with one that they have stored away on the controller. So now if you're sure that your um, install.d is the uh, hacked one, you're going to go ahead and go into your apps on the controller. And you're going to open up one that says Flash Fire. And it's got the lightning bolt on it, or the red icon. And you're going to click on that. And it's going to ask for super user uh, privileges. And you're going to say Grant. And it's going to spin for a little bit. As it does a few things, it's going to give you a disclaimer. You're going to hit agree. And then you're going to hit no thanks on the follow me. And then you're going to go to actions. Then you're going to hit the plus button. And you're going to hit flash zip or OTA. So after you hit flash, zip, or OTA, it's going to prompt you for the location of the file that you want to flash. Now an easy way to get this location is if you go back to your computer here, and type ADB shell. Got to get a new cable. ADB shell. Bear with me one second here. There we go. All right. And if you hit DF, 
at the very bottom, you will see mount external SD. This is your SD card. I have a two gig one in there. But this is where the file resides that I want to flash. So I'm going back to flash fire on the remote and at the very top you'll see where it says internal storage. Drop that down and change it to file system root. Then scroll down till you see MNT slash. Hit that. Scroll up where you see external SD or external underscore SD. Scroll all the way down to the very bottom and you will see open gaps arm. Select that. Now, auto mount and mount system read write. Those are two choices that you can make. Um, I don't believe they are necessary. But you know what? Let me double check. I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. I uh, double checked my notes. You do not need to check those. So you're going to go into the upper right corner and hit the checkbox. And then you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you're going to hit the flash button. And you're going to hit OK. And then what's going to happen here is that the controller is going to reboot. And then you'll start to see a bunch of ASCII text on the screen. Give it a minute. Um, it's pretty small font, but um, there's also going to be a log generated. So if there is a problem, you'll be able to go into the log through ADB Shell and take a look to see what happened. The only problem I've ever run into in the past is just not enough space on the system uh, slice. Other than that, it's worked perfectly fine. So one thing, if um, for some reason, when you hit flash, if it does not go and reboot and go into a text mode, go back in immediately to your applications, to the Flash Fire app, and redo the exact same procedure where you select the uh, file off the SD card and uh, the checkbox on the next screen, and then flash on the final screen, and attempt it a second time. Because sometimes it doesn't quite take, not quite sure why, but the second time it usually takes just fine. And then after the flash is done, the controller will reboot, and you will be greeted with the normal App Store um, questionnaire, and privacy settings, and Google login. Now, there is one downside to this whole procedure. Anytime you want to install an app from the App Store, you first have to run the last Sky Cry shell script. Unfortunately, at this time, there is no way, easy way to get rid of the DJI install D, except for that. And because of that, the install D will prevent the App Store from uh, allow or the Play Store per se to install third-party apps. Now, rumor has it that DJI will be releasing a new firmware in the not too distant future that will allow um, side loading of apps through um, the SD card and possibly through ADB. But we have yet to see that as of yet, and it may be limited on what they'll allow. Now. I am currently working on getting Litchi and other third-party drone-related apps to work with this remote control. There um, are some minor differences that I'm working through, and hopefully that'll be coming around sometime after Christmas. Anyhow, good luck, and if you run into any problems, post in the comments, questions, and um, if you need some screenshots from the remote controller itself, let me know. I'll be happy to um, uh, attempt to put those together and add them to the video or to another video. And uh, happy flying!